Greetings, Mandrake here. I have assembled this guide to help with completing a difficult challenge. Complete all Hail Infinite missions on Legendary with all skulls on, except the Bandana Skull. I have a series of videos where I have completed every mission from beginning to end. In this video, I will provide info about the skulls, not where to find them, but how they affect the game. I will briefly talk about all the enemies except the bosses, which will be covered in each mission video. The challenge I came up with is to complete the campaign with uh, the most difficult settings in place while not using the tank gun, without skipping major enemy fights, and without exploiting any glitches. And there's plenty of glitches. There's all kinds of glitches. I'm, I'm not going to be able to round them all up, identify them all, but such glitches as the grapple pound, where you can grapple pound through like a wall, through a door, do clipping through walls, launching across the map to skip missions, uh, any kind of invulnerability glitches or glitch, or circumventing the game to skip major engagements or entire missions. And I've seen I've seen uh, videos out there where the game can be completed, the entire game, all 15 missions can be completed in 30 minutes or less. And of course that's done prior to any patches, updates, or fixes. Essentially, uh, complete the game as the developers intended on the hardest difficulty settings. Bandana gives you a significant advantage with unlimited ammo for weapons, limited use of grenades, unlimited use of acquired equipment without any cooldown. Take that out of the mix, as in take Bandana out, and now you have Famine that comes into play. And I'll be talking about Famine. Uh, then you take put famine back in place, and the game becomes significantly more difficult. For all the videos or for all the missions, I will complete all side missions, acquire specific collectibles in that are essential to the game. I will collect all Spartan cores to be used for equipment upgrade, capture all the fobs, rescue all the marine squads for valor points, decommission all the banished outposts for valor points, destroy all propaganda towers, and eliminate specific high-value targets necessary for a weapon that can be requisitioned at the fobs. Such weapons as uh, the Duelist Energy Sword, the Volatile Skewer, and most importantly the Arcane Sentinel Beam. There's a couple others here and there, but that just kinda, that's just kind of the gist of it, just the idea. When it comes to the high-value targets, there are some of those that are in your way, they're in the road, they're you know, stopping you from doing, going where you need to go. And there's others that are off-road and out of the way. I'm not going to go seek them out unless, of course, there's a weapon that uh, that's necessary. I will not collect or pursue the audio logs on this account. I'm already 100% complete. I'm not going to go after any of the Forerunner audio logs, you know, those seven giant rings. You have the Mjolnir lockers I'm not going to pursue. And, of course, and obviously not the Skulls, because you'd have to have the Skulls to even do this. Now, on to the Skulls. First off, we're going to go through the I Would Have Been Your Daddy, which is simple and easy enough. Rare dialogue becomes more common. Uh, there is no advantage or disadvantage. It's pretty neutral. Someone's gonna write a story about how cool we are. It'll be called Halo. No, Halo. Fighting reimagined. That'll sell better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rump birthday party skull. Pretty simple, straightforward. Get a headshot on the grunt. Get a pop of confetti. Followed up with some cheering. There is no kickback or damage caused by the pop of confetti and does nothing else to any other enemies that are close by. Fog Skull. Uh, this is quite simple but irrelevant. It's just you have a motion tracker that is disabled but with you have blind in place it becomes irrelevant. Onto the Mythic Skull. Pretty straightforward. Enemies have increased health. 
How much? Oh, it's about double. Now, when it comes to vehicles, the Mythic Skull does not affect them. They are the normal health and take normal damage. So the good news is, you will want to destroy the enemy while it is in the vehicle. Because if the enemy gets out, then you have to contend with double its health while out of the vehicle. When in the vehicle, if the vehicle is destroyed, well, then the enemy will be destroyed. So that's the benefit that you can get. Work on that vehicle and destroy it before the enemy can get out. The catch goal, pretty easy. Enemies throw nades more often and drop nades more often. Other than that, really just kind of the, the things that come from this is whenever an enemy for the most part, sees you at first. Like, the moment they see you, they would rather throw a nade rather than uh, shoot at you. Boom Skull will double the radius of explosions. All explosions generated by grenades, weapons, explosive coils, or scripted explosions, etc. And the Cowbell increases the acceleration generated by explosions. Objects and bodies will be sent flying great distances and at high velocity. In my experience, your best chance to achieve the cowbell launching effect is to direct or place your explosion several feet away from your subject. More than six feet, it's just under two meters. Less than 10 feet, which is about three meters. The clips I'm playing are good examples of the launching effect. Too close or too far away and the effect unlikely occurs. Black Ice Skull. Your shields only recharge when you melee a live enemy. Here's one type of enemy, the Jackals. You got the Jackal Major, the Jackal Minor, uh, the Yellow Shield, Blue Shield. If you melee their shield, you will not get a shield recharge. And if you do, then I guess you're, you're lucky. But by design, you need to melee the body and not the shield to get that recharge. An important side note, if you receive too much disruptor fire causing the shock effect, this will prevent your shield from recharging regardless what you melee. You must wait for the shock effect to wear off. It takes just a few seconds. Okay, on to Thunderstorm. Most enemies are promoted to max rank. The exceptions are the Grunt Mules, the Spec Op Elites, which are the Camo Elites. We also have the Brute Berserkers, and any Snipers, so such as a Jackal Sniper or a Brute Sniper. All these enemies are unaffected by Thunderstorm. Uh, to quickly go over the enemies that are affected by Thunderstorm. I'm going to start with the Grunts. So all the Grunts you encounter in the game, except Mules, will have an Energy Shield, fire their Disruptor, and throw Plasma Nades. Uh, Jackal Miner, I'm just going to call a Miner and a Major. It was easy way for me to remember them. Uh, Jackal Miner, they carry the Blue Shield. They are always going to have a Plasma Pistol. And the Jackal Major that has the Gold Shield. Uh, in most cases, they're going to have the Mangler. There are some scripted cases they may have a Needler. Skirmishers are mostly going to have a Mangler. There'll be some scripted places where they may carry a Needler. Brute Majors. I'm just going to call them Brute Major. They're the ones with the shield. They're all going to have rocket launchers. And for close quarter combat, they're going to have the Mangler. And they throw spike nades. Uh, the first mission, Warship Gabracken, is the only mission when you have Lazo or Thunderstorm on where you they will feature some of the miners like the Brutes without shields and they're going to carry Commando and the Mangler for close quarter combat. They throw the uh, spikes as well. Uh, the Jetpack Brute, I, I guess he's a captain or something like that. He's got a heavy shield, uh, heavy armor, only carries a heat wave but throws the... Uh, spike nades. You will encounter skimmers. 
Uh, in most cases, they're going to carry a rocket launcher, throw dynamo nades, and in some rare cases, you'll find one that may have a shock rifle. And when it comes to Sentinels, I think in most common cases, you're going to find one that's called a regulator. The weapon that carries is the shock rifle. And the one you find less often, the aggressor, carries a heat wave. Elites, there's just going to be two types of elites. You're going to have, and the most common one you're going to see the majority of the time are going to be elite ultras. They carry heat wave, sword for close quarter combat, and throw plasma nades. Camo elites, they're only going to carry the sword and throw plasma nades. Brute chieftains that carry a plasma turret without thunderstorm carry a scrap cannon with thunderstorm. Hammer chieftains appear to be unaffected by Thunderstorm and still carry a hammer. Uh, hunters, all the hunters you encounter are going to be the Red Hunters. The Blind Skull. The HUD has been removed and no longer shows on the screen. Missing is your reticle. You can no longer see the current weapon being held or the amount of ammo remaining. You cannot see your shield status. You cannot see your selected nade or quantity, nor do you know what nade you have or don't have or the quantity. You cannot see your selected equipment or the status. Uh, one other thing that comes into play, the uh, threat sensor, once it gets maxed out, you get the uh, you get the added ability of seeing all the enemy, you see the enemy's health with that threat sensor. Well, with uh, blind on, that's taken away and you can't see that anymore. When it comes to waypoints, as it relates to blind, you can set a waypoint. However, you will not see the distance to that waypoint. You will get to see the beam, but you will not know the distance. On to Famine Skull. Dropped or placed weapons are half the amount of normal. Weapons that you find in a weapon rack are unaffected and their amounts are not changed. That concludes the coverage of the skulls and the basics of the Laser Without Bandana Challenge. There are many more details that can be discussed, however, those details will be covered as necessary in each mission video. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this and the other mission videos helpful in your Lazo journey.